we're going to start off by creating our new project. I'm just going to go to new and I'm going to call this project irritated dolphins. And then I'll click OK. And then this will bring us to our first screen. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the screen orientation because we want our screen to actually be in landscape mode. We don't want it to be in portrait mode. This way we can have more area for the dolphin to fly across. And the way we do that is we go to our screen and here we can specify the screen orientation and I'll put this in landscape and you can see this changes it immediately. Now the next thing we need to do is to add a canvas. And I'm going to drop this canvas on the screen and remember in order to get this canvas to fill the screen we have to go to our screen and we will have to turn off scrollable and then we can go to our canvas and we can set the width to fill parent and the height to fill parent as well. Now we have a canvas taking up our entire screen. And we need this canvas in order to have sprites. We can't have sprites anywhere else on the screen except for on this canvas because they're drawn on the canvas. Now we'll go ahead and add a sprite. We're going to go to animation and then you can see there's an image sprite and we can just drag this and drop this anywhere on the screen. Now this image sprite really isn't very good unless we have an image for it. So we'll upload an image of a dolphin. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this dolphin image that I created and click OK. And then let's rename our image sprite. Let's call this dolphin sprite. And then we'll go to this dolphin sprite and set the picture equal to this dolphin. Now you can see the dolphin is showing up on the screen. And I'll go ahead and launch our emulator just so we can see this on the emulator to make sure that this is working correctly. And you'll notice here that this emulator is coming up in portrait mode, which is not quite what we want. We want the emulator to be in landscape mode as well. But we can switch the mode of the emulator by using a hotkey on Windows. We can do the left control button and then F11 at the same time. And you can see that this switched my emulator into landscape mode. Now we have this dolphin on the screen, but we can't do anything with this dolphin. We can drag, but it doesn't do anything. We try to fling him and nothing happens. We're just drawing the dolphin at this point. We'll be using a clock control in our app to trigger different actions at specified intervals. We'll be basically using the clock to create a timer that will do something every so many seconds or milliseconds. Have you ever seen one of those fans that moves back and forth from one direction to another? Well, we could write a program to control a fan using a timer that switches the direction of the fan every five seconds or so. Timers are a useful programming concept that can allow us to do an action or check some condition every time a certain amount of time has passed. Most games have some kind of timer that goes off many times a second so that the sprites in the game can move and other game events can happen. In our game, we'll be using a timer to make the dolphin spin in a circle by changing his direction every so many milliseconds. Anytime you want to do something in your game or check something after a certain amount of time, you'll want to consider using a timer. Now our dolphin is pretty boring just sitting there not really doing anything. Let's make him spin around in circles when he's not being flung. This way we'll have some animation effect for the dolphin. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a timer and we're going to make him rotate every so many milliseconds. I'm going to go ahead and grab this clock and drop it on the screen. You can see that this is also a non-visible component. I'm going to rename this clock. I'm going to call this spin timer. And inside here, I can set the timer interval for how often that it should do an update. We'll go ahead and leave this value at the default for now, which is 1000 milliseconds or basically one second. And let's go into our blocks editor and let's make something happen every time that one second or that timer expires. We'll go ahead and go to my blocks and we'll click on our spin timer and we'll say when spin timer dot timer. This is basically going to fire every single time that one second passes or whatever our timer interval is set to. And every time this happens, what we want to do is we want to take our dolphin sprite and we want to change its heading. That's the direction it's facing. 
We can go here to set dolphin sprite heading. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to, and we're going to use a math procedure. We'll do minus, and we'll take whatever the current heading is right now. Let's go ahead and go to our dolphin sprite. And here's our heading. And we'll subtract 30 from it. Now what will happen is every time this timer ticks, we're going to go ahead and rotate by 30 degrees. Let's bring up our emulator and see what is happening now. We're getting the rotation effect, but it's not very convincing. It looks like he's doing this in slow motion. There's a couple things we could do. We could increase this number to make him rotate a larger amount each tick, or we could make the animation a little bit smoother by changing the interval. Let's try changing the interval. We'll go ahead and go to our spin timer. And instead of every one second, let's make it every tenth of a second. Now when we take a look at this dolphin, this is looking a little bit better. I wonder if we could even cut that in half, make it twice as fast. And if we change this to 50, All right, now that dolphin is really spinning, and that's looking pretty good. 